Welcome back, bread friends. Me, your Ellen, your crazy baker chick, weirdo person. Um, I've invented a new recipe for you. But before I show you the recipe, I want you to please click the little subscribe button. And if you like this video, please click the thumbs up so to let me know that you like it. And you can always comment below with questions. Um, I do have a website. And the wonderful thing about the website is all of the recipes are in PDF format, meaning you can view, print, or download them super easy. And the PDF for the recipe link will be below this video. So not in the video, but below in the description. And you may have to click the word more to get the description, but it'll just be one click to get to the recipe link. Beautifully typed out, PDF, easy to print. Okay, so the format of my videos goes something like this. I either have the ingredients pre-measured and I put them in, or I measure them in front of you, which is what I'm going to do today. I kind of change it up. And then I start the bread machine. I tell you what I'm going to set it on. And then I show you what the dough looks like five minutes into kneading. You always must check your dough five minutes into kneading, the consistency of the dough, I should say, to make sure it's not too wet or too dry. It's kind of a Goldilocks thing, too wet, too dry, or just right. And I always, 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 always set a timer to make sure that at five minutes after kneading begins, I check my dough. And sometimes it's a perfect dough ball, sometimes it's too wet, sometimes it's too dry. And then you make adjustments. So humidity, dryness, temperature of your kitchen, all of those are factors. Even if you measure and weigh everything to a tenth of a gram, you still need to check your dough every single time. And that's why I never use the timer or delay for a loaf of bread. Okay, so like quite a few of my recipes, my daddy, who's 91, will have a memory and he will start talking about a bread that he used to eat from his youth or that he and my mom used to get at Costco or whatever. Well, this is another inspiration from the tales that my daddy tells at the dinner table every night. And he called it cream bread. And so we looked it up, we Googled a picture, and it was a long cylindrical bread with ribs. And I said to my dad, you mean that would happen if I did this? He said, yep, that's it. So this pan, super lightweight by the way, I guess it's nonstick coated, maybe aluminum because it is so super light. Um, this is actually sold separately. So you don't, when you send for this, if you want to on Amazon, if you're only sending for one, so you have to order two, they're not very expensive. And I think the company is Fox Run, but I will put that below in the link in the recipe. So don't worry, you don't have to go crazy looking for it but it is actually meant for a German half circle. So it's like the cake is baked like this and then turned over and unmolded and then they decorate the top and it has like almonds and stuff. And I'm going to spell the name of the pan slash cake because I do not pronounce German. I should have called Andrea Peterson if you're watching this. I should have called you to ask you, but it's spelled R-E-H-R-U-C-K-E-N but I don't, I don't want to butcher it, so I'm not going to try. All right, so I'm calling this Creamy Dream. Actually, my husband made this up just now on the way home. We went to a nature center and he came up with this. Creamy Dreamy Cream Bread. Creamy Dreamy Cream Bread. And it is creamy, it is dreamy. And why is it a cream bread? Because it has heavy whipping cream or also known as heavy cream. Same thing. If you go to the grocery store because you want to make this, or if you're buying whipping cream to make whipped cream, sometimes it's just called heavy cream. Sometimes it's just called heavy whipping cream. It's the same thing. Okay, so I haven't even typed up the recipe yet. I have a handwritten one in front of me. My first ingredient is the heavy cream. I'm not going to tell you the amounts. It's all going to be in the recipe. 
It's a lot of cream. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Pick up a number again. Almost there. There we are. Stick this back in the fridgy digi. And now my husband can use it as coffee. <laughs> So we're gonna put the cream in. In my bread machine, the liquids go first, followed by the flour, sugar, salt, yeast, and if there's butter, it goes along the sides, not touching the yeast. Um, if your bread machine does it a different way, don't do it in the order I do it. Do it in the order that your bread machine says to do it. So I'm gonna pour this in, and it's so thick that it definitely sticks to your measuring cup, and you're gonna be missing a lot of the cream if you don't use a spatula to get it out. It's a must to have the proper amount. I think we're pretty much there. Okay, put that aside. And then we have two more wet ingredients in very small amounts. We have lemon juice, and we need seven grams. So the lemon juice is not meant to flavor this. It does not have a lemony flavor. It just needed a little bit of acid. Whoops, poured way too much in. Let's try that again. Seven grams. Talking too much and not paying attention. There we go. The, the lemon juice is just an acid to enhance the flavor. You could probably also use apple cider vinegar. That's in. I'm gonna get this out of the way, just put this lemon juice back in my fridge. I think maybe I'll maybe freeze it in ice cubes or something like that. And the last wet ingredient is vanilla extract. And I'm using a lot. 12 grams. Oops, a little less. Perfect. So all my liquids are in the bread pan. Put you away. Now we're ready to measure the flour. By the way, I know I have a bowl on my scale. I just use it as a base for putting other vessels and I never use a bowl because you'd have to clean it every time. So I'm going to use this bowl to measure my bread flour. And a typical two pound loaf, at least my recipes, need 540, approximately 540 grams. Again, you don't need to write anything down. If you forget a technique, you just watch the video again and you don't have to measure, measure, ugh, measure, memorize the amounts because you have a re written recipe in that PDF format. By the way, I have a website where all my recipes and videos live and it's Ellen's Bread Machine Recipes.com. Ellen's no apostrophe, bread machine recipes, plural, recipes.com. Okay, so I'm putting the flour in and I'm kind of going back and forth. And I've been doing this as of late, kind of spreading it out a little bit. But you don't want to dig down too deep or you'll hit liquid and you don't want to do that. A little bit of this too. All right. So now comes the sugar, and yes, it'll, it is going to be a lot of sugar, 80 grams. And you're gonna see what that looks like. And I'm using brown sugar. I haven't tried it with white sugar. I haven't tried it with honey, but honestly, if you don't have brown sugar in the house, 
and you're dying to make this and you have that pan and you have the cream and the lemon juice and everything else, you know what? Go for the white sugar, go for the honey, just do it in the same amount of grams. So there's the brown sugar. It is, what, maybe half a cup if you're not, if you're not used to thinking in grams. Whoops, I lost some. All right, and we need salt. And when I, when I originally made this, I used less salt and I found that it needed more flavor and that's why I upped the sugar, added the lemon juice and added a bit more salt. I'm doing 11 grams of salt. I started out with nine. I just realized I didn't get the butter out of the refrigerator. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to grab something to weigh the butter in and a knife. Um, and this is actually the perfect time to tell you that my bread machine has a preheat, or it's actually called rest, but what it does is it slightly preheats your ingredients to make them optimal for rising and getting the yeast in at the right temperature. My bread machine does that. If yours doesn't do that, then your liquids should be slightly warm. I think the temperature is 110. I would just call it lukewarm. Your butter should definitely be softened if you don't have the rest or preheat, but I do. So I can take my butter straight from the fridge. We're almost there. Almost there again. <laughs> All right. There we are. Should be right on. Yes. Okay. Put that butter away a little bit later. Now my hands are slimy. Greasy from the butter. And the way I put the butter in, and you have to follow the directions for your bread machine, not my directions, unless you have a zojirushi, or if you have a bread machine that has similar directions. But you do not follow the order of ingredients for that, that I'm showing you. You follow it, whatever your bread machine manual says. Please read your bread machine manual, and then read it again. Then read it five more times. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to just go down my recipe and make sure that I've added everything because I know, I'm pretty sure that all I have left is yeast. Cream, lemon juice, vanilla. Yes, got it. Bread flour, brown sugar, salt, butter. Perfect. Oh, if you have, I used, I used salted butter. It's what I happen to have. If you only have unsalted butter in your house, just use the unsalted butter and instead of 11 grams of salt, do 12. Just add another gram. It's not a huge difference at all. And I am using SAF Instant Yeast. And grams. Oop, a little too much. Perfect. Oops, went down a bit. Sometimes the scale budges. There we go. Way. I'm kind of weird about the yeast. I never take it out on the counter to do earlier. I always do it, never even kind of put it down. I know it's weird. So what you want to do to put your yeast in, if you haven't found this out already, you probably have, is to make a little well. Don't dig too deep again, you'll hit liquid. And you don't want the yeast to touch liquid yet. And you pour the yeast right in. It's all little home. The only thing the yeast should touch is the flour. It doesn't touch the sugar, doesn't touch the salt, it doesn't touch the better butter. It's only on top of the flour. So I am going to set my bread machine for dough. If you have a Zojirushi Virtuoso Plus, it's course 11. You probably know that already. And I will be checking in with you, showing you my dough consistency and what I need to do, whether I need to add flour or whether I need to add liquid. Yesterday I had to add like a tablespoon of flour. This dough will look a little wetter 
and honestly greasy or butterier, butterier, <laughs> more buttery, because it has heavy cream and basically an entire stick of butter. So it is a very, very high fat bread. If you're looking for a healthy recipe, this is not it, but it's really delicious. Okay, I will check in with you shortly. So I'm doing a little preparation, although I have like 90 minutes. So this is a jelly roll pan, which is basically a cookie sheet that has that little lip. I sprayed some nonstick spray underneath and it kind of helps this stick. And then I will put the two sides of the, or the top and the bottom, not sides, of this pan. And you may see a curious sight over here. <laughs> This is the only way I could come up with doing anything. You've seen these, they're called binder clips. So these do not, I wish they did, but they do not snap together. You can't really put a rubber band around them that would melt in the oven. Um, I was thinking I could use twine, the kind that you use on poultry when you roast it, but I, that gets dampened so it wouldn't catch on fire, but I'm afraid it would on something dry. So, I have binder clips and you'll see me do it and it it works so and they're metal so it's it's fine <laughs> it, it, this is what we do all right so 28 minutes has gone by for my bread machine that's 23 minutes of rest or preheat and five minutes of kneading if yours if your bread machine starts kneading right away that means you just set a timer for five minutes so let's look and see if it's too wet, too dry, or just right. Do -do 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 -do. All right, well, let's see. It's not sticky. I mean, it's, you can see the shiny grease on my finger. After all, it's full cream. And, uh, you know, just because you see that, and that doesn't mean it's not right now. If this was another dough, I would say it's too wet. It's not. <laughs> the reason it's not is because it's not going to get any smoother because it is so much fat, okay? But it's not sticky. It's not, you know, coming up on my fingers. It's it's fine. I don't need to add any flour. I mean, if it was another dough, yes, it would look too wet. This is not. Um, and it's definitely not too dry. So I'm going to Stop poking and close the lid, and I'm gonna wash my greasy fingers and I'll check back in a bit. The dough's been rising for a little while. We still have uh, almost an hour before it's done rising, so just take a peek. It's not a huge riser, but you'll see when I bake it, it works. <laughs> By the way, this dough smells like cookie dough. Oh my god. Yum. All right, the dough has 28 minutes left before it's done. And it's risen just a little bit more. And that's going to be fine, I promise. So there's there's really nothing to show, but inside I'm, you know, leap of faith that the bread has risen and filled, you know, come up and filled, risen and filled the whole thing. And I am preheating my oven to 350. I cannot check the temperature on that. And those of you who know how crazy I am about taking the temperature of the bread will know this bothers me to no end, but the twice I've made it before, 45 minutes at 350 was perfect. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, there's nothing, like I said, to show you. I'm preheating my oven to 350. So I just put it in to bake at 350. Set the timer for 45 minutes. You will see when I take it out that some dough will leak out one corner. That's the best part. Because <laughs> you get to taste it before the bread is cooled. I will show you what it looks like. I'll actually show you how to unmold it when the time comes. And we're back. And... We're going to now take the quills off the, I know it doesn't really look like a porcupine, but for some reason that makes me think of that. So I'm just gonna, it's a little awkward because they're hot. 
that I've done this. This is the third time. And I did not have dough ooze out, which is a first. And I don't know whether to be happy or nervous about what this is going to look like, but hopefully it will be fine. All right. That was my drum roll. And this lifts off quite easily. Look at that. Oh, sorry about that noise. I did not mean to do that part. Or drop it. <laughs> it's greasy. Look at that. Wow. All right. And then by two. Hopefully no clanks. No more clanks. It just comes right out super easy. I don't know if it matters if I have it that way or that way. And the fun part about this is you have a built-in slicing guide. <laughs> So what do you think? Pretty gorgeous, right? So now I'm gonna let this cool for a little while and about two, three hours. It's 4.30, so my uh, dad and my son are coming to dinner. So just when they come in for dinner at about 6.30, I will cut a couple slices and show you what the inside looks like. Fun. And it's time for the big reveal. Here we go. And you see the ribs, they're indented. You make nice little cuts right on the ribs. Look at that. Look at that. Still a little warm. So I'm not going to cut the whole thing yet. But you can see that it's moist, dense, but not in a heavy, like a whole grain wheat type of a denseness. It's very moist, almost, almost like a cake, but not quite. Definitely bread, but not something for sandwiches. It's sweet. It's super creamy well it's a cream bread and it's creamy and dreamy and it is absolutely delicious i'm gonna open this up and just it's like super soft and i mean i've tasted it before but it melts in your mouth it is heaven it's so yummy just give me a little bit of uh strawberry jelly or butter or chocolate sauce um, that was a weird one, I know, but I have this, um, chocolate tahini that's unbelievable. Or absolutely nothing. Thanks for watching. Like the video, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget about my website, ellensbreadmachinerecipes.com. Look directly in the link below, in the, in the description below the video. There will be a direct PDF link to the recipe.